Hey folks, I want to give a quick demo of the Audio Insights plugin that released in 5.4. I think partly because it's a little bit of a sleeper, um, and that's because there's not really meant to be a lot of focus on it right now. It's it's a very very early access. Uh, you know, I can't I can't stress that enough. Um, it's you know still considered an experimental plugin state uh, wise, but uh, audio, audio Insights is um, intended to become eventually the sort of centerpiece of the audio artists, like at least at the beginning, the debug toolkit. But I think it's going to be one of those sort of companion windows that you're just going to want open all of the time, especially for uh, like multiple monitor situations. Um, and so this is what what we're looking at right now is the is the uh, interface, um, and you can see, it's like I said, very early access. We've got log in here, um, so you know, and then we could probably fil search and filter uh, for uh, audio stuff, um, but it just shows the log by default. And there's you can see the sort of viewport window that isn't really used right now um but you can kind of imagine what this might be in the future there's a basic transport which relates to the playback uh, like playing an editor uh you have some options to start playing this with pi stopping with pi etc uh, i s suggest just leaving this as it is now and uh loading up the uh, insights uh, window before starting your Pi session. There's over here that you can see the world filter and this will allow you if especially in the cases where you're um, you maybe have you're working on a multiplayer game you can select the uh, the multiplayer the, the uh, player world that you want to monitor. And then we have um, a section for uh, listing sources, virtual loops. Virtual loops, for those who don't, who aren't aware, are sounds that are playing or that are supposed to be playing, but they're like outside of range, and so they're kind of on a timer uh, until they come back into range. And then submixes, obviously, and then audio buses. If you know if your projects have them, then we sort of have like a main. Uh, monitor output here and a uh, an analyzer here. Like in this case, it's a wave uh, amp, amp, um, uh, uh, <laughs> an amp uh, graph, right? For it's going to show us our waveform output essentially. Uh, so uh, to turn it on, let me switch over. Uh, all you need to do is load in the plugins, load up the plugins window, and then s search for Audio Insights, and then just turn that on. And then it'll be available for your project. Uh, and you can find it under the Tools menu under Audio Insights. And that's how you'll bring up the window. So here I have Lyra's uh, front end, and I can begin playing the game. And uh, let me um, switch to sort of full. So you can see everything on our on here. We have uh, the music playing. And in fact, if we, fo if we focus in on that, we can see we have uh, a, the source listed, the music system is listed. And, and any of these sources, if you double click on them, it will load the editor the the editor window for that source so here's the mx system and sound editor so if you're just like oh i need this that's where the problem is double click boom and you can edit it right away which is really cool and then here we have a, an analysis an amplifier the amp output analysis um, a peak amp analysis and you can see you know the music Sort of output over time, which is really cool, and changes in volume or pitch can also be monitored. And you can just sort of drop. There's a drop-down window to switch between all of these values. You can look at. You can look at the amplifier output, 
um, the volume, this is basically an envelope uh, follower, right? The volume, uh, which is like the logical volume of the sound, that's, that's the setting, right? The distance attenuation, so if, like if it's far away or close, pitch, low frequency cutoff, and high frequency cutoff. So there's a lot of things that you can sort of observe and monitor uh, for your sources. And then we also have, you know, we don't have any virtual loops in this case, but uh, you know, we have submixes and we can monitor things like, let's say the sound effects submix, the UI submix, the music submix, and maybe the main submix. Maybe these are the ones we care about most right now, right? And so we can sort of look at those and monitor their outputs. Um, and then again, if we had audio buses uh, implemented in this project, then they would appear here and we could add them to the list of meters that we observe. Uh, and you can see we have the meters are, you know, in this case, my output is stereo. So my submix graph, uh, my submix graph is configured for stereo output. But you would have all the channels if this was, uh, you know, surround output or something like that. And then at, um, let me uh, go back to full screens. You can kind of see when I add these sort of UI sounds that the sources are appearing on the list of sources and we can do cool things like for example uh you can do like partial substrings um filtering so like let's say if you only want to see with uh see sources that have ui in the name there they are and you can't see the music one right and then we can, we can also solo sources that have UI in the name. We just want to focus on that. And this, by the way, is why uh, strict naming schemes are really, really powerful in Unreal. Uh, because we can do things like this. Uh, we can also... Um, let me uh, go full screen for this again. Uh, so we can also type in UI and mute those sounds. So now they're excluded from our mix. So those are pretty, those are two pretty good, uh, cool little things. And then if we uh, load in um, uh, a game, let's just, uh, uh, just do a quick play here. So while that's loading, uh, in the sort of background here, I, I want to emphasize what what I think, where I think this is, even at this very early stage, is still useful. Oh, and let me uh, let me add um, a couple player bots here, so we don't really need me to be part of this playback experience. And by the way, F8, if you're curious, F8 will eject you from the pawn control. So you can actually like start moving around the level. Uh, and I think this is the kind of thing where you, you, know, you can really start um, honing in your mix with these, uh, you know, not just observing the, the like playback of sounds but you know we can we can say like here we've got um, we could solo all the inventory pads right so we could just sort of make sure hey this I don't remember where the inventory pads are <laughs> Uh, oh, along with, okay, let's put the, this one as well. Let's do uh, au.debug 3D. Uh, oh, let me, um, actually, let me get back in the game and do it. Oh, there's an inventory pad. au.debug.3D, oops, uh, enable, what was it? Debug. they change the audio oh sorry that's not debug 3d visualize enabled one so this will also show you all the sources right so let me um let me exit out here again Ooh. uh 
here's all the virtual loops, right? And our, our um, inventory pads uh, are part of that as well, right here. So here's, as I get close, there we go. As I get close to this one, you can see the yellow volume. It's sort of, the name is sort of shaded according to the volume. And then as I get away from it, it goes red, it's out of range, and now it's part of the virtual uh, loops list, right? Because it's, and you can see it, uh, audio component that's sort of sitting there waiting for me to come back into range. Cool, cool, cool. So let's say, you know, you wanted to hone in on the, the weapons mix, right? So, we have weapons is only part of like the weapon sound design and so uh this you know this is a way to sort of you know you do your sub mixing here essentially like oh how is the balance between these weapons you know or um maybe you just want to listen to you know pistols Sorry, pistol. Let me get back in here. Right? And just hear just the pistols and how are they sounding, right? And and are they sounding, you know, good far away, nearby? That sort of thing. So uh let me F eight again. Boop. So yeah, I think this is a really useful tool. I think that there's a lot of, I get caught in. There we go. Like, uh, unmute those. So I, I think that this can be a very useful tool. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, as it grows and matures, it's gonna be really powerful. And I'm really excited to see what third-party developers, like how they extend this, because that's the other thing. This is this is also just this is like the the framework, the bones of something that is extensible as well. And so, so you know, if if you make like a MIDI plugin or something like that, right, then you can create a Audio Insights debug uh, tab and feature that would be part of this and basically make this this nice sort of hub where designers can keep going to uh, sort of act as a companion to their development process and their debugging process and for QA as well. Um, so I just wanted to show y'all this. I think it's really cool. Even even in a super early state, I think it's really cool. And I... I I think that's super useful. And also, you know, the other th nice thing is, you know, we use this stat sounds and all this sort of, it's basically what we're looking at here, but what we, what's nice is that we get this um, without cluttering our screen, right? Like this is one of the big pains is when you're putting debug information up and it's you're just cluttering your screen with, with uh, useless, uh, useless debug. So, so yeah, there you go. I hope this was uh, interesting for folks, and um, I encourage you to check it out and and you know play around with it. See see if you like it. Thanks.